All righty, everyone. It's 6 o'clock on May 17th. Uh, welcome to our May 17th school board meeting. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order at this time. And before we start, I'm just going to make a, do a quick roll call, make sure everybody uh, made it over from our prior meeting. Uh, Director Ku. Hey, good evening. Oh, thank you. Director uh, Stoffer. Yes, hi, good evening. I'm here. Uh, Director Jeffries. Hello, <clears throat> I'm here. Thank you. All right. Uh, Director Pickens. Hello, good evening. And Superintendent Prime. I'm here. All righty, great. Thank you. Uh, with that said, if uh, you could all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, as you uh, see, we chose, we uh, are meeting tonight virtually due to some uh, things that came up, and uh, it was good seeing you all the last couple of meetings, but uh, we'll be back. Um, but tonight will be virtual, so with that, we're following virtual protocol. Uh, any public comments um, at this time would be submitted in writing, and we do have a couple, so I'll be reading through those a little bit later. Um, if you are, are in attendance, please make sure that you are muted unless you're speaking, um, and, uh, and that's for our board members, staff, and the uh, presenters this evening. Uh, and also make sure that you have your video off if you're not uh, presenting or talking at that time. And uh, let's see, then also this meeting is being recorded at this time, so just a reminder of that. Um, and uh, in case of emergency, find the quickest way to get out of your house, I guess. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Director Pickens, can you read our vision and mission statement for us today? Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, our community inspires and prepares each student to thrive is our vision and our mission. In connection with our community, the Squim School District empowers staff to inspire hope and provide flexible, innovative learning opportunities in a safe and respectful environment so each student thrives. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Ku, can you read our uh, acknowledgement of the land we stand on? You bet. Happy to. Squim School District administrative and school buildings sit on the ancestral land of the, uh, I'm going to try Sklalem people. While the Sklalem traditionally come from one nation, history has led to the formation of three sovereign Sklalem tribal governments, Lower Elwha Klalem tribe, Jamestown Sklalem tribe, Port Gamble Sklalem tribe. The district's primary relations or partnership is with the Jamestown Sklalem tribe. Today, the tribe and the district share a partnership that includes official consultation on program and funding changes that may directly affect American Indian and Alaska Native students, as well as holistic service planning for students to remain successful in their educational journeys. All right, thank you. Okay, next up. First thing on our agenda for um, business, we have the approval of our minutes. We have the, our May 3rd regular meeting, our May 3rd equity workshop, and our May 12th policy workshop. Chair Gitzman, this is uh, Director Stauffer. I make a motion to approve, but I, I'd like to add one change to the policy um, workshop minutes. Not sure we it reflects everybody that was attendance either virtually or in person. Okay, I, I do see a note here an error in board member attendance has been corrected. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll for to get the discussion going, I'm happy to second. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, what was your correction there, uh, Director Stoffer? Here, one second, let me uh, pull it up. <laughs> Looks like, um, well, where we say who's president has yourself, me, and Larry, but I know that um, Brian and uh, and Eric were um, virtual, and uh, that's how we have it worded on the regular board meeting minutes. And so um, that was just, uh, I thought I remembered everybody there, either in person or virtual. Um, yeah. It's minor, but it is um, it just reflect every, that we're all the good work that we're doing. So. Yep, yeah, uh, looks like we do have all listed there that that is the I think we've got an I've got a note here in the president's copy that says that's been uh, th those have been corrected. OK, thank you. OK, thank, thank you. Yeah. Also, just a small correction on the May 3rd minutes. Um, just under um, board communication under under my section, I think it was the, about the, the second line down. Very very minor, but it just was supposed to read. I've I've held a lot of roles, not um, little in the word little in there. But happy to with that minor correction. <laughs> happy to vote to uh, to approve. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor with those corrections signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, moving on next, we have, uh, do we have any changes or additions to our current agenda for today? Uh, hearing nothing to uh, add or change, uh, I entertain a motion to approve our agenda. Move, move to approve as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up, we have our consent agenda. Um, entertainment motion. Motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Yeah, if I may, just uh, uh, appreciate the new folks coming on board. Uh, obviously, this is no unique thing, but it happens every once in a while is our coaches. Um, so just a, a shout out to the coaches and their almost volunteer, mostly volunteer uh, role with our students and just appreciate what they do. We've got a lot of dynamic uh, valuable members of our community there. Also, just just to note, want to just congratulations to uh, to to uh, Christy Queen, who's uh, lo mm -hmm. located on there for for moving up to a principal role. I think that's great. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Eric, for for that. Yeah, and uh, uh, congratulations. It's uh, yep, very very exciting uh, for her and for the district. So congratulations. OK, anything else? All right, uh, hearing no more uh, comments. Uh, all those in favor of the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right. OK, next up we have, it's like two. Uh, written in comments, so I'll just read through these real quick. So uh, the first one is from Joanna Bear. I want the school board to know that it is extremely important to get our kids back in school full time. I am constantly getting emails from teachers telling parents what to do if their child is failing. This tells me that many students are doing are not doing well. Kids are not motivated to do online learning and they are failing, falling behind. This is a crisis that can be averted if they are allowed back in school full time. It is important for their mental health too. Please make it a priority to do whatever it takes to get our kids back in full time. Thank you. 
Next one up is from Rachel Anderson, and this says, I have two children that attend Helen Haller Elementary, one in the second grade and one in fourth grade. Both kiddos have been home with me since the pandemic start in March of last year. I am hopeful that if kids go back full time in the fall that I will have the option to keep them home like I've been able to, to during the school year. During such a turbulent time, I prefer to keep my kids home because I'm able to be a stay at home mom. I wanted to save that in person spot for a child whose family is in the most need for it. That's that being said, I also understand wholeheartedly how challenging kids are and having them home 24 seven has had some really rough days. I also want to mention how much I appreciate every single teacher, paraeducator, janitor, office staff, and everyone else at the schools. They are working so hard every day without a doubt, even on the weekends. So uh, just a note to, uh, and these are topics that we will be discussing um, coming up on our, uh, with our uh, reopen plan. So looking forward to that. Thank you for the write-in comments. And again, just a reminder to those that are out there, we do appreciate all of your your comments uh, that you either send in or when you come in person and uh, and present to us. It's uh, it's important to us to hear what our local constituents and and the families and all are are thinking and hearing and needing uh, from the board. So we do appreciate your comments. All right. Okay, next up we have our student board representatives. And first up is our senior representative, Olivia Preston. Hello. Hi, Olivia. All right. All right, so for DVS, they would like to share their excited and anticipation of growing next school year. They've been working to create a family and student handbook as well as brochure about DVS. They would like to give a special thanks to Megan Mike and Kayana Harrison for their support and expertise of this huge project. The high school would like to share the high school is APT te AP testing happening still this week and next. FFA had a very successful flower sale and is now trying to sell some pork. Students have butchered, cut, and wrapped all of the meat. Call Bill McFarlane if you are interested in buying one half of a pig. The Squim Middle School would like to share they just began their second session of COVID modified sports. This session, boys and girls of all three grades are playing basketball and running track. After COVID hi hiatus, we will be running full ASB board elections in the coming days. Instead of making sure there's, there is equity around posters and such, this goes around we are eliminating the candidates video commercial time. The SMS Fly Fishing Club is in full swing and has been responsible for helping eight students catch their first fish on a fly rod. Students have been learning how to tie flies and have been studying local fish species. Some good news, SMS is working on the fourth episode and student leaders are hopeful that their work carries into next year with a new group of leadership students. This group has been very passionate about, passionate about the student-initiated project and want to see it not only continue but grow. This project has gone from being a first time semester in the fall newscast in the second semester. In sixth grade, they are reviewing 12 major topics for me to create a dodecahedron. The students seem to enjoy the creative project. And then um, I interviewed with, with Kate. With everything being different this year, they're working on me family graduation, working with the community on putting somewhat normal graduation. As of now, I will be on the field with all COVID guidelines being held. Tentatively, they're hoping to be giving four tickets out for each student. Our, our main focus at the moment is the backup for graduation. Since school changed to hybrid, the leadership class is doing their best to make students feel that school is as normal as possible. Doing our usual projects like Sports Wall, Thankful Thursday, and Student Outreach. We hope that learning in, that learning in these times, students adapt and grow. Next year, our projects will remain mostly identical, but with less restrictions. And that is what she would like to share with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. 
Next up, we have Alyssa B. By our junior representative. Hello. Thank you. Helen Heller would like to share that our final Diebols benchmark is this week. I ready testing is still continuing. We are getting ready for our sixth book for summer book bagging in our HHE gym. This is when we put together the 530 plus book, book bags together with the preschool. Each bag will contain six self-selected books and Helen Heller elementary reading log together with a, a UDEB reading log. We successfully completed two picture days last week and were able to accommodate school pictures for all families that wanted them. Registration for all grades is open and kindergarten roundup and screening will be May 24th from 4 to 6.30 p.m. in our gym. Last week, we celebrated our health, health services team in recognition of National School Nurse Day. Busy with, uh, they are still busy with fall planning and developing class lists for next year. And Grey Wolf would like to share that this has been a quiet week but a busy month. Picture week was a huge success. Our kids came to school looking their best and it was great to have a look at their smiles because of time constraints, constraints we will not have a retake day. The first week of May was our teacher appreciation week. This year, the PTA supported a staff appreciation event like no other. Grey Wolf staff participated in a survivor themed contest with daily one minute challenges. The challenges were designed to give staff members a chance to appreciate other uh, others in our school and we have been an inspiration for this year uh, and to do fun things for students. While you may have seen a teacher perform a cheer for students in the looper lane or you may have heard about fun ways students were greeted at bus drop off, we wanted, we wanted to share a few examples of the other cheer being spread this past week. Our PTA is simply the best. Last week, we celebrated assist, Assistant Principal Week. This year, it, fall, it fell during our spring break. Everyone in the building had a chance to give Jennifer, Lo Jennifer Lopez praise and appreciation. It is important to take time to celebrate the good things in our school. And that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alyssa. All right. Next up, we have our regular board communication uh, from our uh, board members. First up, we'll have Director Koo. All right, thank you, sir. Whoo, that's a terrible backlight I got going. Um, I just wanted <laughs> to not neglect my camera completely tonight. Alyssa, your, your final statement was exactly where my head and heart is today, uh, and that is just uh, taking moments to celebrate things. So, uh, Principal Queen, uh, just a follow up from an email I sent you. Congratulations. Uh, really excited. Uh, Helen Howler is beloved to the district, obviously, but also with my family and uh, look forward to uh, your your journey ahead and the uh, the big shoes you have to fill there. So um, excited for that. Uh, and thank you to Principal Stanton for your your tireless leadership uh, over the years that uh, again, uh, the Koo boys have been there and uh, during a very tough uh, period in the district's history with COVID and everything else going on. Um, so just want to send some praise. The other uh, gratitude I'm feeling, frankly, is it is candidate filing week. So uh, we've already had a number of uh, candidates emerge um, for the school board, and that is a beautiful thing uh, for the community because uh, it shows engagement, it shows concern, it shows uh, relevancy and I just really appreciate I'm energized by the folks that have uh, already stepped forward um, and others that have are kind of mulling uh, whether or not to jump in or not so my gratitude to you um, and your consideration of doing that and looking forward to getting to know candidates as they come forward and like I said just grateful for your willingness to to do the good work I had used a derogatory term recently about uh, sometimes feeling like you're putting your head in a wood chipper, but uh, I promise the work is worth it. Um, students like Olivia and Alyssa are why we do this, and um, my gratitude goes out to any candidate considering uh, jumping into uh, this this type of role, but uh, I can promise you that, uh, you know, the board directors, uh, both existing and uh, past um will support your willingness to serve and um, answer any questions you may have 
And that's really all I have. There's so much more going on, and I'm looking forward to getting into it tonight. Thank you. There's that mic button. All right. Thank you, uh, Director Koo. Uh, Director Jeffries. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, of course, uh, congratulations to Christy Queen on being the next principal of Alan Haller, and congratulations to Rebecca Stanton for doing such a great job all these years with Helen Haller. Um, pretty exciting, uh, two very exciting uh, administrators there that I think are very good news for Helen. Um, project managers, we met with a couple of, interviewed a couple of project managers today to take on our $15 million capital levy. So we're getting that process started in earnest, and that was very, uh, that's going to be very exciting. I'm also looking for the um, forward to the school improvement plans today. I think um, probably student success and achievement and improving that may be our number one job. Oftentimes we say hiring a new superintendent or looking after the budget is number one. But um, the reason we want to hire good superintendents and we want to take care of our money is uh, so the kids can have a um, a uh, successful and um, robust learning experience here while they're in squ squim schools. I'm looking forward to the equity conference uh, next couple of days put on by WASDA, WASA, and AWSP, basically the school board directors, the school administrators, and the school principals in Washington putting that one on. Looking forward to that. I have a um, Squim Education Foundation meeting on Thursday afternoon. They're doing some fantastic work, and they're trying to decide what to do with their uh, teaching grant money. So be looking for that, teachers. And I enjoyed uh, spending some time this weekend with my older daughter, who just lives over in Tacoma, not too far away. But I haven't seen her for nine months due to uh, mean old COVID. So um, that was pretty exciting, and we are planning to get together a um, little mini family reunion in September. I know that's a ways off, and by then, hopefully, um, we will have uh, a better picture of what COVID is going to do to us. So, uh, looking forward to the uh, rest of the meeting tonight and all the things that are coming forward as we get ready for next fall and starting the new school year. Thank you. Thank you, Director Jeffries. Uh, Director Stoffer. Yes, hi, good evening. Uh, Thank you again, uh, Livia and uh, Lisa, on your uh, um, student voice input. So important to our work. And uh, also congratulations, shout out to uh, um, Vice Principal Queen as she moves up to that position of, pre of uh, principal. And my heart sometimes uh, goes towards Helen Haller because that's where my daughter started uh, her time here at SQUIM as a as a third grader and knew uh, Principal Stanton from uh, back th through those years. So thank you, Becky, for your work. Um, from there, a couple of calendar items. Uh, last week, wearing my Chamber of Commerce hat, uh, um, had a tour of the River Center um, that's in process of uh, of getting expanded and remodeled, and. Uh, um, just a, another great example of uh, community collaboration that, that our tribal partners have uh, invested in that center and, and a lot of our uh, students uh, go through some uh, education programs there. So I would, if you get an opportunity, uh, colleagues, uh, see if you can get a tour of that as uh, the work is, is moving along and it's supposed to open in the fall. Um, and then I think we're scheduled for uh, the tour over at the Field Center. I think that's on Wednesday, so uh, be able to see uh, that progress. And then the, another important item in the education opportunities um, throughout the county. Uh, appreciate the work on the policy workshop and the equity workshop that uh, we've had prior. Um, the policy, you know, that we haven't done this deep dive of those policies. Um, and so this has given us that opportunity to unpack them and look at them, um, find the true meaning of them and, and the connections. And so I, I appreciate uh, Jeff, 
Director Jeffries at always reminding us on that, Pardons. Um, I'm sure we'll figure out when what annual means and uh, um, some of those other key terms. And I also always appreciate uh, Tracy Norman's work on uh, getting those out to us. Um, from there, switching over to my legislative hat, um, on uh, here on the agenda, I, I sent a transportation uh, proposal. Um, it's actually a current position, uh, but we're proposing to revise it. And that, along with uh, um, several others, the Ledge Committee meeting will be meeting uh, Friday and Saturday, along with the WASA Resolution Committee, to uh, start unpacking all of those and what they mean um for the work to for the next legislative session so um when i'm in that seat as the one of the direct area four i i look at my lens as a squim school board director but i also am representing uh, the 15 school districts here in the north olympic peninsula and taking input from all 15 of those but if my colleagues have some input um Please send that my way as we're having those discussions. The next process out of that is that the Ledge Committee will vote whether to uh, approve or not approve an item, and then it um, it still goes to the whole body of uh, all of the 1,477 school board directors. So encourage the look on there. And there, I sent out a direct area four email with several items on there, and. Uh, I think that, uh, yep, that's about it. So looking forward to the other discussions with the back to school plan and then the um, school improvement plans. Thank you. Thank you, Director Stoffer. Uh, Director Pickens. Thank you. Um, just, uh, just a few brief items. Um, last, uh, last Thursday was able to attend um, or WASDED put out an invite for folks to attend the, the balanced the calendar summit. Um, talked about restructuring the, the school year a little bit. Um, that was a very, very informative summit that was put on. Um, I was happy that they were addressed. Um, the, one of the big concerns I have, which is just impact to the community. Um, fortunately, it, it didn't talk about um, um, additional funding that much that that, that might come with uh, some type of uh, um, a change to to the calendar, which that's always the uh, seems like the the stopping point at which um, um, you know is, is the funding piece to it. But found it very informative, so um, that was um, I, I was glad that I was able to attend that. In addition to the uh, the was the networking call, which was also on Thursday, um, and something they they talked about on the Thursday call, which had just recently came had just recently come out. I think that same day was the updated um, standards from the Department of Health um, regarding reopening for the next school year. So addressing some of the some of the public comments that we had, I was, um, was happy to see that uh, certainly there's a priority um, on getting kids back to school full time. Um, I was a little concerned because there was some some subjective comments in there as well that the term uh, to the greatest extent po possible always sort of catches my eye when we're talking about safety because um, sometimes uh, greatest extent possible could be um, very subjective. So um, so I guess more to more to determine on that front. So I'm looking forward to, to further conversation with how SQUIM plans on rolling out that plan. Um, I I do want to, to stress again, I feel like I've stressed this on other meetings as well. Just we do have those additional funds, those SR3 funds. And one one way we could take a serious look at using those funds is looking at our ratios in our classrooms to make sure that we have our um, low class sizes, as low of class sizes as possible so that we can um, really meet those students where they're at and uh, start addressing um, both those uh, social emotional needs that they have as well as um, any uh, any additional learning that they might require. I think that that class size that teacher to student ratio is one of the biggest factors then one of the ways we can really implement it uh, moving forward so um other than that um again congratulations to uh to uh to chris queen for the for her uh, her 
promotion up to a principal and um, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Director Pickens. And uh, just real quick, I just have a couple of uh, update reminders for the, uh, for the board. First of all, just a reminder to complete the self-assessment by, uh, by the 24th, next Monday. Let's make sure you get that done. Very important for us to see how we we're doing and then we'll have a discussion on that after. And then uh, if anybody's out there from the community, uh, just a reminder that the community superintendent search survey is going out today and it'll be out through June the 1st. So reminder, we'll, we are um, in, we'll be doing a superintendent search uh, at the end of this year to start for the 2022 school year. So uh, good to get your thoughts and opinions in on that, on, uh, on what you would like to see. All right. So uh, that, that's all I have. Uh, and, and again, yes, as others have said, congratulations to Chrissy on her promotion. Um, uh, Well-deserved and look forward to all the good things that I know that she's going to be doing over there. Um, all right. Moving on. The next up we have our, uh, man, we've got them all in one tonight. Wonderful. Uh, looking forward to it. We have our SIP plans from our uh, principals. So I will turn it over uh, Dr. Prime, I'm not sure what order we have, but. Uh, uh, all righty, thank you. Well, we are just going to start. We we put we start with elementary, and then we worked our way up. So Donna Hudson will be first. And what these are continuous school improvement plans, and it is hi Donna. <laughs> it is um, a little bit um, different than I think you're used to, but. The, each principal has 10 minutes to talk about their plan. And when we come back in the fall, <clears throat> um, what we'll do is we'll start to, we'll um, work with all the principals will work with their staff. They'll write their plan. They'll present it in October for board approval. They'll be back in January to update the plan. Then they will come back in um, April with another update. And then they'll come with a final report of the plan and how the plan worked throughout the school year. So, um, it's tied to the strategic plan and our goals and objectives on the strategic plan. So pretty excited about the work and it's a lot of work, but we, this is our first uh, blush and our first trial with it. So I will be quiet and I'll let Donna jump in for Gray Wolf. All right. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Dr. Prime. Thank you to the board. So uh, this really is an interesting uh, new uh, process we're using with the CSIP. Uh, it is a lot of work, but it really uh, gave us a great new insight into our building, into the uh, data that we collect. And uh, we're both, uh, Jen and I were both uh, enjoyed the process a lot. I think the best way to talk about this CSIP is kind of CSIP interrupted. Um, last year was such an unusual year going home in March and uh, not having the opportunity to do some of the things that we've done in the past. Uh, so we uh, met most of the goals we wanted to in last year's SIP, but uh, we did not, uh, we weren't satisfied with our writing goals, so we pulled that over. Um, we just got a new uh, version two of the CKLA curriculum, and that we believe is really going to help writing. It's already improved um, some writing scores on our first round, but uh, we really want to dig into that with the professional development for our staff. This year has been a year that we haven't been able to do professional development just because of the unusual uh, schedule in our MOU. So uh, we really look forward to pulling that um, out next year or, you know, next year when we're back uh, in full. Uh, our, sec our second goal is about small group instruction. So at Great Wolf, we have a long history of success. Um, usually we're averaging about 80% uh, of our kids reading at uh, end of grade levels each year, but uh, we really have a drive uh, to li with literacy and we want that to be even higher. And so um, what we're looking at is uh, just a more PD. We've got an a intermediate literacy coach now at grades three, five, and just looking for our staff to be back on campus, our kids back on campus, so that we can really uh, continue to improve our small group instruction uh, using CKLA and some of the other um, uh, curricula that we have. Um, our third goal, uh, we worked with Ann Ranker this year. She currently works at the ESD. And... Um, we uh, were a part of the grant to bring a universal design for learning into um, our school. 
Uh, we did it. We, we called Mark. We called uh, Becky and said, you guys want in on this? And before it, uh, it, as it happened, kind of our entire district moved into UDL and it became one of our district wide uh, goals. And uh, I really like UDL because it uh, builds capacity uh, for classroom teachers uh, for all kids. I really, the, I've got it on my wall, but the kind of the logo to me for UDL is uh, if it's good for one student, it's good for all students. So if it's good for one student to read the directions, that's uh, something we can do to make it better for all students. If it's good for one student to have written notes of a lecture, then we can provide notes to all students. Uh, those are ways to help all kids access, not just the content, uh, but really the experience of being a, uh, in person, you know, a classroom student. So uh, that has been a fun goal and we'll continue that one as well next year. The big goal, and when we wrote it, we didn't necessarily know it, what is our uh, social emotional learning goal. And we're just really focusing on making our classrooms uh, safe and inclusive for all students. Um, it's not uncommon in a school setting of a student to have some self-regulation problems or becomes upset. They just get removed from class and sent to the office. The office kind of works through the process and then they send the student, you know, 10 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever, back to class. And we really spent a lot of our time at Gray Wolf in those March, April, May months doing uh, professional development for all of our staff uh, around social emotional learning. We brought um, break spaces into the classroom and worked uh, with our students, or excuse me, our teachers just to build capacity uh, to keep kids in a classroom while they may be struggling um, emotionally. It's been great. Uh, we have kids using or accessing those break uh, spaces. We have um, teachers not um, necessarily addressing behavior. They just let the student go to the break space. They let them self-regulate. They try and get back into green, which is unready and willing to learn, and then moving back into the class. What's great about it really is that um, kids don't lose out on 10 minutes or 20 minutes of uh, instruction while they're trying to work on uh, just uh, calming themselves. And so that's been really successful this year and we really look to build on it next year. Um, we've also videotaped um, SEL lessons, our school counselor has, um, and we've, video we've shown the videos at lunch while the kids are having uh, their lunch this year. So it's just been a building wide effort really to help kids understand, hey, we all get upset and that's okay. And we can continue to kind of um, reflect and think about what may, what was the antecedent, you know, how did this happen and then work through it. And, and that's really a great skill for life, helping people understand uh, why they're upset and how to get back on track so that you can be successful. Our last goal is around math, and it's uh, not necessarily my favorite goal, but the way it became part of our CSIP makes it my favorite goal. I was meeting with Dr. Pryan and uh, I said, well, I, she said, I don't see a math goal. I said, we don't um, actually have a math goal. We're really good at math at Gray Wolf. And she said, you can't get better. <laughs> and I, I said, oh, well, yeah, you know what? We can get better. And so I came back to the building and talked to staff and it was really right in front of us. We were already doing it, but I just wasn't thinking it as a SIP goal. And that's looking at math vocabulary. And so our kids are very good at algorithms and they can do division, they can do multiplication, but when they sit a test and the test has math language, our students don't always uh, know what a quotient is. Find the quotient, like what, which one is quotient? Is that division, is that multiplication? And so it's a real focus, particularly our fifth grade this year, but three, four, five, um, just working on that tier two math vocabulary. Um, our uh, Title I uh, math teacher, Mrs. Wicker, has um, videotaped 14 different um, math vocabulary uh, videos where she goes through the word, the definition, gives examples of it. They're short, three to five minutes, and we've uh, had a lot of kids during this time when we've been online working with kids, watching those videos, and made it a part of our uh, program uh, for remote kids as well. So. Uh, those are the five goals that we have for our CSIP. Uh, we're excited for next year to start already. Uh, big plans for staff development just to continue to improve in those. We think they're all important for um, kids and learning and uh, trying to get back to some normalcy. Uh, the only other thing is um, some things that we found this year that we really like. 
And, um, we, you know, kids learned and we learned maybe not the things we thought we would learn, maybe not in the way we thought we would learn them, but certainly learning occurred uh, for everybody this year. Uh, one thing that we've always done since I've been at Gray Wolf is we've uh, had parents drop kids off. We sent about 500 of them out to the play field and they had about 30 minute recess before school. And this year, because of COVID and the fact that we couldn't let kids uh, play together kind of on the loose, we had kids come right into the building, sit right down in the class. And it has just transformed uh, the way our school day starts. Um, and we really like it. Uh, so this year we added a third recess to the school day. And we're going to continue that next year. We're going to bring kids right into class, uh, get their breakfast, uh, get them started with learning. And we really, uh, I think this is, the teachers have appreciated as have we. And I think it's really good for the kids. They come in much more calm, much more ready to learn. Um, we implemented, we added a second looper lane out at Gray Wolf. And now uh, in the afternoons, it takes us three to five minutes to um, get all of our kiddos that take uh, private cars home um, in their cars and off our campus. So about five minutes, it's amazing. Uh, I think parents enjoy it and they enjoy the uh, lack of sitting in uh, parking lots at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. So that's also something we're gonna stay um, with next year. We've also appreciated for some kids eating lunch in a quiet classroom is better than in a cafeteria. So next year we look at splitting some of our lunches uh, between, uh, splitting some of the classes between the classroom and the cafeteria. Uh, for some kids, it's just calm. It keeps them a little more calm, less stimuli, and that's a good thing for a lot of kids. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about what we've observed about our kids and uh, one of the things that we really have observed is they're, they're different. This has changed them. Uh, and I don't think it's good or bad. I think they've just learned different things than they would normally have learned if we hadn't have had um, uh, COVID. I think uh, they, they've learned that they're strong. I think our kids have learned that they um, are resilient and they've learned uh, what grit means. We, we teach that, we talk a lot about it, but kids don't often get to experience it and they've had to experience it this year. Uh, we've seen our kids come back with just increasingly crazy levels of kindness and compassion for one another. Um, we, we know that learning has happened. And as I said, it's maybe not the learning that would traditionally happen, but our kids have learned. Uh, they've learned a lot while they've been away and they've uh, learned that they love being back. Uh, we at Gray Wolf uh, are excited for next year. We're gonna finish out this year strong and come back with an uh, environment of care and trust, compassion for our kids. Um, and, and we're excited for the goals of our CSIP to kind of roll that forward next year and uh, be ready to go on day one. So Dr. Pryan, that's what you have from Gray Wolf. And I, I made the time limit and I was nervous about that. <laughs> you did very well. Thank you. And I just am curious if the board has any questions for you. Very nice job, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. And I know it's hard to squeeze it all in in 10 minutes. <laughs> It's hard to squeeze it in in 30 minutes. <laughs> it's almost impossible in 10 minutes. Okay, well, if there are no questions, then Shelly, I'm sorry, not Shelly, uh, Rebecca, Becky, go ahead and we will um, have Helen Heller. Well, good evening. Thanks, Donna and Dr. Prine. So it's really good to see everybody sort of, but I, I really only just see these round circles and I never thought I would say I would, you know, I I would just so much rather be there in person with everybody, it's, it's much more fun. So anyway, uh, to the board, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I really appreciate that. And um, I know Christy and myself have already met and we are working together on a seamless transition for Haller families and staff. Um, so it's, we've already begun the good work and so we're both excited to do that. So tonight, I think it's super appropriate for me to tell you that, um, that I wanna share some alphabet soup with you, right? Because we're an elementary building and we spend a lot of time on the alphabet. So listen, your job tonight is to listen for some of those acronyms in the alphabet soup. And then if you don't know what they are, ask me at the end, would you please? 
So um, right now our current academic focus at Haller is um, that we're always working on reading, writing, and math, right? And I talked with you guys last year about some of the things that we're doing. And um, right now we're continuing to provide 30 minutes of win time, which is what I need time for explicit and targeted reading intervention. Our staff uses tiered academic supports and entry and exit points for LAP and title services for students. We have a significant ELL population and students um, receive services um, and they receive increased intervention time and we embed that time during win time. And then we also have some pull out small group services. Our teachers progress monitor students learning and we use that with our Haller three week cycle for progress monitoring. We use the PSI and the PA, PASI and that's part of our 95% intervention program. So all teachers are doing that progress monitoring, which is great. Uh, they monitor, they progress monitor math and we use Eureka exit tickets to do that so that teachers have daily formative assessment. We also use iReady lessons and iReady diagnostic data three times a year. We utilize that as well. Um, we're also double dosing, a lot of times um, triple dosing in both ELA and math for students. And we use our resource teams, our title and lap teams, and of course our classroom teachers as well. Our building schedule at Haller is set up with common planning time so that um, teachers can co collaborate specifically about interventions, groupings, and the data that they're seeing coming out of their grade level, not just their own little classroom, but the entire grade level. So that helps all of us to own all of our kids. So one of the things that's been challenging about COVID is that the, the COVID safety measures, they do not allow for the big groups that we like to see for 95% and when we are what I need time. So right now we're only seeing students two times a week in person. And when you do the math, that's really only eight in-person instructional days where we're, we're really used to seeing kids for 20 days in a month. So although we're getting a fraction of the instructional time and intervention that would happen in a typical year, we're still working hard on all of those interventions and using our resources as well as we can. So within my evaluation meetings this spring, when we're taking a look at student growth goal data, I've had teachers say to me, you know, Becky, some people are saying there's all this learning loss for kids. And they said, it's really not learning loss. And I and I love the way so many of them phrase it. They, they said, you know, our kids are still learning. But right now in the spring, in late April, early May, they they are right now where they typically would be in January or early February. So I thought that was a great um, reframe of what's really going on. Kids, teachers are still doing great work teaching and putting in a lot of time and effort and energy. And kids are putting that time and effort and energy right back in with the learning. So kids are still learning. I just want everybody to keep that in mind. It's just not always where they've been before. So some things that are going well at Haller school-wide um, is school-wide data collection for all students for um, Acadians, which is formerly known as Dibbles. Um, also for data collection school-wide for 95% are Eureka Math exit tickets and iReady ELA in math. Uh, school-wide calendared progress monitoring for all students for Acadians 95% and iReady. School-wide calendared SEL data collection for all students and we use um, an internalizing and externalizing behavior screener and it's called SIBS and SIRS. That's another acronym for you to possibly know and, and that specifically has helped us over the years to group students that have specific behaviors and um, our SEL teacher and our school counselor can target students and remediate some of the things kids are struggling with. So that's that's been some exciting data points for us as well. 
We also have a social emotional learning specialist that sees all students, just like all, all of our students see um, PE and music. They also get to see a social emotional learning specialist and she's done some really great work this year shepherding kids through COVID and their feelings and, and hearing about their feelings and talking about ways to for them to talk to family at home and for them to talk to each other at school and for them just to really mm, process what they're going through because it's challenging. Um, other things that are going well, um, embedded ELL, ELL services in our wind time and we have also strong tier one, two and three supports in specifically PBIS, ELA and math. And the other thing that's going well is we have been on the ground floor of our MTSS integration for all of our systems and you'll hear about that a little bit more in the in the ref, in the goals and I'm going to giddy up because I'm watching my time. So um, our CEE data is trending up in each category each year. Again, common planning time for each team. Our staff trust each other to do well for students and that's that's played out in our CEE data um, and we've made decisions based on that data and reduced behavior referrals in 1920. So our, our first goal is to really coordinate our MTSS <clears throat> and the supports at each tier for each system. So that's academics and here's your alphabet soup, right? Academics, PBIS, SEL, RTI, Kids at Hope and UDL. And so I really just want you all to think about MTS as the framework, the overall framework that holds all the planning and practice for all the systems that we use in the education world. What, whatever system we're using to serve students, we can put that in an MTSS framework. <clears throat> MTSS makes our practice transparent and shares our options and supports with all educators in the building, which is really important when you're thinking about onboarding new staff um, and, and teachers brand new to the teaching game, right? We want them to know what's out there to help them. So as you can see from the items above that are that are going well, we have currently have a strong tier one built for MTSS framework and it, this goal helps us work through a long term plan to include all tiers and that work takes some time. So already we've moved through an RTI readiness rubric with our tier two team and we've been working on that every week. <clears throat> We're also working on compiling compiling tier two interventions for each system and we're currently working on adding an MTSS team that will end up screening data in all areas, not solely academics. So our school wide reform goal number two is really under the MTSS umbrella of academic services. We want to evaluate our progress monitoring systems and then adjust those systems based on evaluation outcomes. So we've completed evaluating our literacy progress monitoring and intervention. We feel like those systems are strong, but we really want to focus on the math piece and spend some more time evaluating the progress monitoring there and make sure it's being used well um, and to improve student outcomes, right? So it, truly because we have a strong tier one uh, with with MTSS and, and lots of other areas for alphabet soup. Our goals are really geared toward fine tuning all our systems and making it really clear what supports, data points and remediation and enrichment are available to everybody in our building. And I think my time is almost up. So do you guys have any questions? Um, uh, Becky, I don't have any questions, but I want to just you know, thank you for the presentation one and uh, two, you started off talking about it would have been nice to be in person. It would have been nice to yeah have this in person. And I just want to personally thank you for all the work that you've done at Helen Heller over the years. And I have no doubt that you will have uh, Christy extremely prepared uh, to take over um, yeah. some big shoes next year. So <laughs> thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. That was Brandino. Eric, oh, Eric, sorry. Eric's got his hand raised. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> I what I cut is. him off. 
<laughs> if, if we were in person, I would have known that. I know you would have known that. That's OK. Eric, go ahead. Hi, thank you for the uh, great presentation. And um, I, I just really quick, I just wanted to thank you for for talking a little bit about that term, um, that term learning loss, because that's that's a term that I've found myself I've thrown out there a couple of times, but now rethinking it, you know, that's that whole avoiding that whole deficit thinking kind of lens. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad you addressed that and um, something to, to consider as we move forward. So just wanted to call that out. Thank you. Thank you. And Brian. Yeah, no, no questions either, but I wanted to throw in a cheap thank you as well. Uh, not only for your presentation tonight, uh, which was which was great, um, but just everything you've done, continue to do through the remainder of your term as our beloved principal. And uh, anyway, just uh, can't can't stress that enough. But thank you so much and uh, back to business. You bet. And Jim. Yes, uh, Principal Satin, Becky, thank you. Um, it was good seeing you in person. <laughs> it was the last week or so as we were navigating through a restaurant. So thank yeah. you uh, just for your work. And I, I know that your your heart is, has been with these, our youngest, most precious commodities. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate so much and uh, all the best to you as on your next journey and adventure. Thank you. And looks like Larry wants to chime in as well. You bet, you bet. I just want to thank you for all that you've done for Helen Haller. It's been in, it's an amazing program. I really want to thank you. We, I think the board or some of the board members toured Helen Haller a couple of years ago. And uh, it was just amazing what's going on over there and what uh, you and your staff are doing for kids. And uh, I know from a, um, as a, as a retired educator, I know that, that all of that stems from the leadership in the school, and you've been a fantastic leader. And I'm Thanks. excited about Christy moving in, mm -hmm. and she's got a good mentor in you to get her ready. So uh, thank you so much for all that you've done for Helen Haller and the kids at SQUIM. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yep, you bet. Thank you. And thanks for that reminder, Larry, that tour. Best part, I think, was having lunch with the kids. Ah, that was fun. All right. Who do we have next? Uh, okay. Well, I just too want to say thank you to Becky. This is a, a public thank you to her. Vince is next, but Becky, before you go, um, it has been a pleasure working with you this year, and I will miss you also personally next year, but we are very excited about Christy stepping in, and I just want to say thank you to both uh, Christy and Becky for making this transition seamless for everyone. So on that note, Vince is um, on deck next for Olympic Peninsula Academy. Take it away, Vince. Thank you. Tracy, could you go to page two, please? Thank you. Well, I guess not that page. It's page two on ours. Just the, uh, let's see, I guess it's page four, the executive summary. Right there, there you go. Thank you. Hey, I wanted to share with you guys, arriving at this point at OPA was a, was a long and wonderful process. We uh, did an activity called the data carousel where we took an opportunity to evaluate every piece of data we could get our hands on from CE data to state assessment data to iReady data to parent survey information, all kinds of information. And we were, um, because we're small enough at OPA, we were able to meet in person and really dive into what our strengths and areas of improvement were. And it was a, it was a wonderful process that we were able to involve the entire staff on. And through that process is how we identified kind of our, our strengths and our improvements. And so for us, we think this is gonna be a three-year journey. You'll hear the terms systemic and implement and develop in terms of the goals that we're setting out to do in the near future. Um, the strengths at OPA are certainly its culture. Uh, from You hear it from kids, you hear it from staff, and you hear it from families how individualized, customized, and family-like the atmosphere is there. And as a new staff member to OPA, I would certainly echo that. 
an example of that being the case is the disciplinary exclusionary rate uh, are pretty much negligible. They just do not exist at OPA because of the culture that's uh, created there. The next thing that is just at a tremendous strength at OPA is they are very proud of, of their ALE roots and being an ALE school. Um, I didn't start many sentences with, hey, at Haller we used to, or hey, at the middle school we used to. I was smart enough to do that, but I, I know this much that uh, a basic ed approach is not the approach that is what creates success at OPA. And, and so grasping that the culture of ALE programs is very important. Secondly is our parent partnership. I mean, that's integral to the name of who we are. And so in thinking about this year, at any given point during the school year, you'll have 15 to 30 parents on campus uh, instructing students, supervising students, just part of the program. And so this year was very different related to COVID and, and having that there. So we're looking forward to uh, bringing back our parents as partners. Another uh, strength for OPA is its enrichment program. You have everything from guitar lessons to drama to co computer coding to a last year they had a, a investment course taking place. And so the enrichment program is an integral strength at OPA. Um, and in terms of a specific academic strength, students uh, are demonstrating lots of increases on, on SBA, I-Ready and classroom-based uh, assessments in terms of ELA. Where we need to improve um, uh, overwhelmingly was our SEL approach. We currently do not have a systemic social emotional uh, approach. We have lots of teachers working very hard to address social emotional learning independently, but not as a system. And so we're working hard. Uh, we're actually reading uh, um, Habits of the Mind book right now, and we're looking at Habitudes as another possibility for us for next year. We'll talk about that as a goal for us. One of the other things that's a significant area of improvement is uh, in recent history, OPA has had significant challenges with getting adopted curriculum from the district. For some reason, there was a barrier to them having the same materials that are used across the district. And I'm happy to report that with Dr. Prine's support, we are going to be uh, readily receiving the same materials that the rest of the district has. And so staff are very excited about that. One of our challenges this year is we could not uh, run our enrichment courses uh, like we've done in the past. And so that was an area we needed to improve, but we figured out a way to do enrichment courses uh, slightly differently this year. So we're happy to report that we've kind of addressed this during our COVID times. Math is an area that we're all significantly concerned about both from the state assessment standpoint and from our iReady assessment standpoint. We know we need to create and implement an improvement plan that addresses uh, how our students can improve and also uh, addresses the professional development needs of our teachers. And in science, we need to look to, uh, we have one teacher that has to teach multiple grade levels, not ac across 180 days, but more 90-ish days in an in a, uh, OPA model. And she uh, needs to address the creation of priority standards. In other words, creating what are the most important standards that need to be addressed for our students. And lastly, it's a, a strength and it's also an area to improve at OPA. The roots of OPA are steeped in cross grade level learning opportunities when it comes to the culture of OPA. And one of the things we'd like to get back to our original mission and vision uh, was about creating those multi grade level opportunities for kids. So we want to uh, honor that tradition of who we are and get back to that idea. Thanks, Tracy, for the time indication. So, Tracy, I'm going to have you turn to page. I'm going to go to our goals. It is on page. Page 20, please. Oh, excuse me, 19. So based on our data carousel experience and identifying our strengths and our challenges, we came up with three uh, strategic plan goals that um, we think will, this will be the foundational year for them and we think they're gonna be part of us for the next couple of years. Um, the first one is an ELA goal and that's to develop and implement a systemic K-5 literacy approach 
which includes pacing guides, progress monitoring systems, data and interventions. I won't go through and review with you all the activities, but uh, a big part of that will be um, our folks understanding what's happening in the classroom next to them is impacting the classroom above and above them. And so we're hoping that that will have a, a big impact on the literacy um, development of our students. And the next one, go into the next page, Tracy, please. Goal number two is our math goal. We want to develop and implement an academic or tier two vocabulary system of utilizing a Eureka math curr curriculum in kindergarten through eighth grade. And goal number three, next page, please. Is our SEL goal. We are currently researching and reviewing SEL materials. We plan to select and implement a systemic SEL approach uh, next fall. And that is all we have. Any questions? Uh, go ahead, Director Ku. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Principal Riccobini. Um, this is good to hear. Check in on what's going on and what you're managing. It's I can only imagine uh, with this virtual interface uh, what you and your team are doing. So thank you. Um, you may have touched on this, and if I missed it, I apologize. Um, but just in the theme of challenges with math, and I'll be fully honest, that's an issue in uh, my household <laughs> of um, just you know ground to cover. Um, what what additional uh, supports uh, are you applying there or proposing to apply to to help cover that? Well, I think our first step is to understand that math is another language, and so helping our students understand the language of math is our first step. But just in terms of the model at OPA, one of the things that many folks may or may not know is it's a multi-age model K-5. So just from a delivery of instruction standpoint from a teacher, you've got to deliver K1 as one grade, two, three is another, and then four, five is another. We don't split off into single, singly delivering content until the sixth grade. And so that creates just a big management challenging situation in terms of how to deliver content, um, not simultaneously, but in a manner which you know is coherent for kids while you have two grade levels in your classroom. So that's a significant challenge. Getting our staff the professional development and resources they need, I, I think we're going to be able to have them get there and understanding how we can be paced better together is going to be our first step. Great, thank you. All right, well, thanks, Vince. It looks like uh, no other questions at this time, but. You know, we definitely appreciate all the work you and all the team are doing over there at OPA to keep that um, amazing program that's been uh, such an important aspect for a lot of our uh, our students and families uh, through the years. It's definitely been an innovative program, and I appreciate all the work you're doing to continue that and make it even better than it has been in the past. OK. I think we've got uh, Mark in the middle school up next. All right, I guess I get to take it right from there. And that being said, uh, it's rather unusual. This is the end of my second year here, and I still haven't spent a year with kids. So that that's an odd thing from the get go. Now, when it comes to the school improvement plan and so on, I would have loved to dazzle you with my ability to disseminate the data that we collected over the last year, uh, and maybe this, getting ready to collect our second set. But as you know, we're not going to collect SBA data for the second year running. So that in and of itself is rather unusual. So most of our ideas and things have come from internal um, assessments, either by course or by departments. Sometimes we've used the, the iReady work. Uh, but that's not the only place. We realized that we were in a unique situation this year, so that called for some unique thinking. Uh, I think you heard from uh, my colleagues across the board of a variety of those things, some of which we're a part of. Uh, so as we think about, you know, goal one for this, where we're, you know, working on trying to be that collaborative, focused, and 
and also then innovative and flexible. I think the conversation around universal design for learning is a critical one. It means putting aside all of your teaching practices that you were trained to do if you were my age or yeah, maybe a little younger, but it's a unique way to do things. It's, it's all about trying to uh, start from why, eliminate barriers and give as many kids access and as many different modalities to the process of learning. And the greater our staff becomes familiar with the brain science behind it, and we give them time, uh, the better that will show up in the classes on a day-to-day -day basis. I gotta tell you, you know, we have it as our goal, but it's not going away. It's gonna be one where we will need to engage in the UDL work uh, next year and possibly beyond that. It is hard work to put all that together. So uh, we'll move forward from there and, and we hope to impress you with what we do across the district. Uh, some of the other things we've got going on, uh, the, our PE department continues to um, amaze me every year. Last year, uh, if you might remember, Mark Texter uh, put in a grant and got bicycles. So when kids return in the fall, our folks might be starting on learning how to ride bikes for the first time. We're finding out more and more kids today don't know how. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we also this year collected and uh, acquired some endo boards, which means our kids are going to learn the skills of balancing and coordination that they might need for either surfing or snowboarding. So we've got a, a little bit of a connection there locally. And one of our PE teachers is gung ho to, to make sure our kids learn to do that part. Uh, the other innovative piece that uh, I hadn't anticipated, but a couple of our staff members are were literally gung ho about this. They wanted permission to go after building individual student driven learning kits and what that means is they put together the materials for the kids to utilize and i'll give you one example we have a gopro kit uh, with the apparatus to wear it and record that information and then kids uh, can check that out and we had one such student take that uh, project and decide to teach or put together a teaching lesson on how to snowboard i haven't uh, figured out how to do it myself yet, so I have a feeling I'll be watching that over and over again. But that's just an example of some of the innovative pieces folks have got going on. This year, as we tried to address SEL and, and the fact that we noticed last year before we closed down that that's still a struggle for these Gen Z kids. There's a lot of them that they don't have uh, misbehavior, appropriate or inappropriate for this age, but some of them struggle to connect. Uh, so we went about trying to identify kids who might be sitting in classes that are struggling to be successful in the middle school uh, setting. Some of it because they transition to middle school from that family feeling at the elementary, but some of it just because they haven't connected with an adult. Uh, so we initially went after a success class last, last spring to get that started. We found the right person and the right fit for that. And we started it in the fall and we've continued it this spring. And going back and checking on grades and then comments from those kids, Universally, the comments from the kids are, oh my gosh, uh, I am so grateful for this class and for, and they named Mrs. Fieser and um, her parapro, uh, Laura Kaufman, as being critical for their engagement at school. Uh, those two ladies are working on some of the same things you've heard at the elementary level. We're still work using the uh, zones that they use at the elementary level, but they're also working on how to build social skills in the the need to interact with adults, multiple adults, because they've got six teachers, and then their peers that are they maybe didn't grow up with because now they've been brought together. Uh, the other piece I'm going to tell you, your uh, passing of the ability to use the IP grade, you need to know that had a critical impact for some of our kids. Not only did you give grace when you did that, and I don't even have that noted in, in that list there, but I got to tell you, I've already signed over 30 updates to grades where kids who would have received an F if we were to close the door at semester have managed to go back and demonstrate to their teachers enough proficiency to earn credit in those classes. And I, and I won't be surprised to hear from Sean and his team what might have happened at that level. Uh, other things we've changed and altered to try and meet the needs of families, you know, with this uh, Teams and uh, Zoom approach where we've had to do these kinds of meetings, We've become quite proficient at doing 504s and individual education plans uh, where we sit down with families, our staff all log in and we go around the horn and the staff uh, quickly share uh, how the child's doing, how their accommodations may be fitting. And thanks to some of the UDL work that we're doing, 
those families are finding that they're not having to request as often the accommodations because they're just a natural part of what's happening in classes because we accommodate all kids in that manner. So that's been pretty fun. But the teachers give the information quickly to parents, go around the horn, and then many of them go back to the classwork and preparing lessons while one stays behind and represents the teachers to hear the perspective of the parents. So that's been a pretty efficient way for us to get more teachers to be able to be involved with what's going on. Uh, another piece for us that was news, new for us is the way we go about communication. We used to do a variety of different ways to communicate to families, but um, to Megan's credit, uh, she came up with the, the weekly news format, and we've kind of grabbed a hold of that since the fall. And luckily for me, I have Connie Stites, who is a pretty creative lady, and she edits me quite well. So she manages to take my gobbledygook and shrink it down to something that fits on a one-page piece. And we've managed to get out information to families about logistics, some of which might have included today with it, with pictures. And we also get an emotional uh, learning opportunity that's embedded in that, that connects to Habitudes, which we'll use next year in, in Wolfpack. That gets me to jump forward to some of the things that we need to do a better job around. Uh, Got to tell you that deeper in, in UDL, that's an obvious piece. We've got to expand our, our understanding of how SEL works and how it needs to be embedded in, well, virtually every class every day. Uh, that's a piece we're, we're working on, and we've been working with uh, Matt Duco, and, and he's given us some connections to Kokori, which is an app that uh, uh, Sharice in her uh, six class, success class has been utilizing, so we'll see where that goes. We need to kind of build from scratch a new PBIS model that respects the Gen Z kid and sees it from their perspective, because what we had before, although appropriate for middle school, may not be appropriate for the new reality of what's in front of kids. Uh, we've had a conversation in our building, and we're starting to have it at the district level, as you know. Uh, Vince, in his work with his partner here, has definitely got this staff. So the kids at Hope Message, where they know that every child is can be successful and every child is a learner all the time. We got that part where everybody gets it, but there's more work to do there. And we have to decide what, when, and where, and how we might go about doing those pieces or something similar that's connected or related to that. And part of that will come through our wolf packs, which is where that Habitudes piece will, piece will come in next year. A big piece I'm going to tell you we have to work on, though, uh, we don't have a PTO. We don't have a parent uh, booster group. We don't see our parents. They're not as actively involved here. So part of my work next year is to try and start up a site council to get our parents actively involved in what happens here. Hopefully a product of that site council was more parents might become involved and maybe start uh, either a PTO or a booster group up here so our parents are much more involved in what's going on campus. Uh, some other parts and pieces we'll be looking forward is to reconnect with a lot of our partners that are outside of our school. Uh, we've got to connect again with our Boys and Girls Club. We've got some volunteers in our communities that set up a homework club last year. Uh, we hope to have them back. We'll be looking at potential ways to uh, change up the engagement around healthy living. We used to have that through the YMCA in the seventh grade, everybody gets to be a member program, but we're looking at a couple of options for that. Um, we also will want to reconnect with NOSC, the North Olympic Salmon Coalition. If you remember last year before we went to COVID, we were putting together, uh, trying to go out with our classes and trying to repair or change or reclaim a piece of land that had been damaged due to human use and return it to its original piece. We'll also keep up our active stuff with uh, the Educational Service District. Several of our department chairs, science and mathematics specifically, have invited them to partner with us and, and we'll keep that moving forward as well. That said, I think I got done in my time. Yeah, look at you, 20 seconds to spare. All right, uh, Director Koo, what you got? Yeah, I got to say, these uh, these short presentations are going to ruin us forever. You guys showing <laughs> what you're capable of. But thank you. Uh, and yeah, a lot, of, a lot of interesting things there. And I've continued to meditate on the... Uh, the uh, PTO challenge, um, but I've got my youngest uh, heading up your way next year, so um, sure. maybe maybe we can connect and uh, is, is share that some ideas. Is am I here? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, this is maybe speaking out of turn, so forgive me, but I did overhear a conversation with the uh, North Olympic Salmon Coalition and their interest to really re-engage re with schools. So. Uh, I'm encouraged right. to hear you do that. Obviously, anything to get our kids um, back moving, outdoor, science, 
STEM, all that stuff is just exciting to hear. So thank you so much for mentioning that. Absolutely. And I won't forget you volunteered. Dang it. <laughs> I'm your witness, Mark. I got you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, uh, Principal Harris. We really appreciate it and great work over there. Again, you know, to all these, and, and I know we have one more uh, to go, but uh, it's just been a challenging year. But, you know, a common theme has been uh, flexibility and and uh, innovation. And, uh, you know, we've got great teams here to do that. So thank you, everybody. Okay. If no more questions, we're going to turn it over to the high school, Principal Langston. All right. Thank you. Um... The first real thank you I have to give is to Tracy Norman. Tracy, thank you so much. I was having quite a few technical difficulties here today. You saved me, thank you. The second one, of course, I've already heard tonight is Christy. Uh, we're so excited for her up here. Uh, just excited that she'll continue in the district here uh, and can now be kind of a colleague in a different way. And in that honor, we're gonna have Christy do a bit of the presentation tonight. Uh, to get ready for next year when she's doing this in her 10 minute segment potentially. So uh, I loved uh, Donna's statement earlier about uh, a, sip, a SIP interrupted. That was definitely the case as we shut down on March 16th last year. So a lot of the initiatives that we had going um, were kind of discontinued and uh, we had to alter our focus. And Mark was a right uh, he hit it right on the head when he talked about IPs. I'm going to talk about that uh, in, in my half of the presentation. So uh, last year's focus was really focused around MTSS, which you've heard quite a bit here tonight. Uh, at the high school, it was really focused on calibrating our disciplinary expectations, our behavior expectations for our kids in the classrooms, how to utilize our solution center in that way. Um, and the second real focus was around the implementation of a new delivery model within our uh, special education program. And then finally, uh, as Mark touched on also, was a continuation of our Kids at Hope work. Well, on March 16th, things changed considerably and we really kind of refocused our efforts on uh, graduating our seniors and getting as many credits possible for the rest of our kids. Uh, I, I'm confident that we'll reinvigorate the uh, goal number two and goal number three next year. Uh, but that whole idea of uh, how to live in this world and how the challenge that we have at the high school of uh, credits, that's what it's about up here to get to graduation, uh, really changed things for us. And so that's why I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, uh, we only really kind of really focused when we did a, a uh, a redo on our SIP around two areas. The first one I'm going to talk about, and it has to do with our multi-tiered systems of support. Uh, that change came in behavioral expectations because our kids weren't here for over or nearly a year. Uh, two, dealing with uh, our IPs, but prior to that, it was what you've heard also tonight, uh, a focus on UDL. So if you're looking at the three tiers, our UDL work with our entire staff um, was tier one, and really each department then created an action plan based upon uh, the professional development that we got. Uh, and But our main focus became on IPs and how can we get our kids to gain the credits that they needed from this year, but also from last spring. So we really dug deep into how, how can we make that happen? What interventions can we provide for our students to address their IPs? Uh, and again, the universal de design was really a, a tier one intervention, uh, a ton of conversation with our staff. Uh, you're going to hear me say grace, grace and mercy multiple times. Uh, the conversations that we had as a group last year around grading practices, uh, really paring down uh, what kind of standards our staff was going to really focus on, what were the important power standards that our kids needed, um, addressing those learning gaps that are going to be happening when we come back, but it's a different type of learning. We watched a great video, I think, that Mark found at our last admin meeting that we're going to show to our staff that really highlighted uh, what you've heard a couple people talk about is, yeah, it necessarily, wasn't necessarily book learning, but it was a whole different kind of learning. Our social studies department 
government has been talking about uh, one of their main mantras to our kids is now that they are um, they are a reference for the rest of the world, basically, or the rest of their lives, rather. Uh, th when you talk about all things COVID, they can be a reference because they lived right through it. And so still focusing on that, that there was got knowledge gained that might have been different and it might not have been in a traditional classroom setting. So as we looked at our tier two and tier three interventions to address our IP grades, uh, we really wanted to focus first off on our seniors. Uh, so the majority of our work was done on that front to start with, but then it expanded from there. So a few things that we have done this year to address specifically how our seniors can gain back some of those credits. First one, uh, Christy and I went out and talked to all of the seniors through our social studies classes um, about uh, the graduation waiver, about all things IP, uh, trying to provide some encouragement for them. We've built in some uh, positive reinforcements. If, when, if and when you get your IP converted, your name goes much like a PBIS ticket system will go into uh, uh, drawing and you're going to win some prizes just to try and get some kind of momentum in that direction. Uh, extensive communication with our families around IPs, both holistically to the whole school, but then more so individually to, to our kids who had I, or have IPs. Uh, and then ultimately, what we dug down to was we did a deep data dive on our seniors from first semester, how many of them received IPs, how many of those seniors were on track to graduate right now, and then what can we do about that? Then we extended that to second semester to add any student that was currently getting an IP. Uh, and basically what we have is about almost 60 kids or so, a little less than that right now, and the number is, is decreasing. But then what we decided to do was divide them up and basically provide a case manager for them. So our counselors, our admin team, basically our building leadership team, each drafted five or six kids that now we are checking in on a pretty regular basis to uh, provide encouragement, provide support, and work with our teachers on how we can have them meet those needs as a uh, as learners to get that IP up and have them have that not be the reason that they do not walk across the stage here in a few weeks. So that's the first goal. I don't want to take too much more time. Christy is going to talk about her work with our equity team, and then I'll close it up with kind of some of the strengths and some of the things, mostly what we're going to carry over from this year uh, to next year. So uh, future principal queen, and I will tell you, I did say this to the staff last week. She's really excited about the next phase, but she is finishing full bore here at Squim High School, and I appreciate that. So, Christy, go ahead. Thank you, Sean, and thank you uh, for all the kind well wishes. I am honored and humbled and over the moon excited, and it's been fun working with Becky already, and I look forward to working with my new partner, Donna. So, thank you, thank you. Uh, but yes, right now, tonight, I'm going to talk about the wolves. And um, we know the pandemic was a major disruption and one that really shone light on inequities that already existed that we were aware of and really further exasper exacerbated inequities that we were maybe aware of, but now we see in a much more glaring light. And so in the spring of 2020, I threw out to the staff, um, who wants to roll up their sleeves and do some deeper uh, dive into the work around equity at a school. And I had an amazing group step up and I'm gonna tell you their names. The fantastic Sean O'Mara, Sarah Lynn Posernick, Jill Bruyard, Carmen Maxwell, Mike Lippert, Denise Dahl, Brittany Murdoch, and Jay Hall, and our work has been supported also uh, by Rebecca Chen, who is helping us disaggregate our data. So it was a strictly voluntary group, uh, but what was cool is we were still able to get a really well-rounded group of representation with our different departments. And we spent some time talking initially about what does equity mean at Squim High School? And we really pared it down to, we wanna know our students by name, strength and need. And at Squim High School, everyone gets what they need to be successful. Um, we pulled a quote from a book called Leading Equity-Based MTSS for All Students by McCart and Miller. And it reads, Equity in education demands each and every student in a community be invited, welcomed, 
and given a sense of belonging in a system of exceptional teaching and learning that is fluid, responsive, and dynamic, and that uses all available resources matched to each student's need. And we felt that just perfectly summed up the work that we wanted to do. So we are focusing on equity issues and we're talking about what it means to uh, grading, classroom practices, our policies, our course makeup, curriculum we adopt, and our school-wide social-emotional lessons. We have been meeting every month on a Wednesday, and we did, um, because the issue of grading was so prevalent in our uh, in spring of 2020, we really started with what does a grade mean and really worked with our staff with some research, some articles and great conversation about teasing behavior out of a grade uh, and moving in the directions of standards based. We have selected three texts, Courageous Conversations About Race by Glenn Singleton, Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain by Zarada Hammond, and Cultivating Genius by Goldie Muhammad. We have uh, collected data, we're disaggregating our data um, with gender, race, socioeconomic, IEPs, 504s, and ELs. Uh, we're also looking at discipline and behavior data. And then we're making recommendations to our two key decision-making groups. We've already started a draft, first draft, uh, draft draft of uh, revamped dress code that is going to be far more gender and culturally uh, sensitive and inclusive. And we have uh, proposed, we're in kind of a exploratory proposal uh, phase of a bell schedule that would allow us two opportunities consistently each week to teach our SEL. We've purchased a curriculum called Character Strong um, one day a week. And then on the other day, we would have a 30 minute time for academic interventions that are timely weekly within the school day, uh, which is, again, is, is far more equitable. So Sean told me I only have one more minute. So I, or, and that was about a minute ago. So I'll, I'll pause and uh, if there's any questions or I'll kick it back to Sean to wrap up. I will real quickly though, that was awesome. Thanks, Christy. Uh, and you kind of great news was you touched on what I was going to talk about and some of the things we're going to carry over next year, uh, looking at some schedule alterations, still needing to work with the middle school and figure out systemically how we can do it. But great job. That's good. I'm done. We went a little over. That's all right, though. All right, thank you both. Um, yes, and I want to say thank you to Vince and Mark because I didn't jump in there when you were um, both finished, but thank you to everyone um, for presenting your first CSIP. You did it, and you did a great job, all of you, and this is the work that goes on in our schools. I mean, it is such good work. So on that note, um, I'll hand it back to um, President Gibson. All right. Well, thanks. And uh, so sorry, I kind of took over and uh, introduced the next uh, guest speakers at each time there. And I think I'm turning it back over to you again for our back to school plan. So uh, take it away, Dr. Brian. Thank you. Well, you know, I was glad you jumped in once because somehow I inadvertently I went to to make my screen bigger and I had hit the leave button. So I fell out and took for a second. So thank you for jumping in and saving that. Um, yes, our back to school plan. Well, um, a, about a month ago, maybe three, three to four weeks ago, we received um, a checkoff sheet from the um, from OSPI from Superintendent Reichdahl. And he said, here's your back to school plan. And we need to know what you're doing. So Tracy, can you bring that up? Um, do we have it? Yes, but do we have the checkoff sheet? I'd like people to see how we ended up with this from a checkoff sheet. Thank you. And I won't take too much time, but this is what we were sent. So I sent it out to all the principals and they very diligently um, met with their building leadership team, put everything in there. And you can just go through the pages just very quickly and people um, can have an opportunity to look at it on their own time. But they asked for all kinds of different information 
on this checkoff sheet. And so we compiled everybody's um, lists and we came up with our back to school plan. And so Tracy, if you wouldn't mind jumping over now to the back to school plan, I'll go through it fairly quickly. And so we assembled quite a few people for this back to school plan. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Megan Like who has created this plan. It, it is absolutely amazing. These are all of the people that were on um, helping us on the plan. And all these people went back to their buildings or their departments and talked to the people in their departments. So we feel that we got a, um, a pretty well-rounded group of people that have weighed in on this plan. However, the plan is not, we're not asking for approval tonight. What we're asking for is to put it out there. So if other people have questions or anything, they are certainly welcome to um, email Tracy or contact my office. So Tracy, if you can scroll through really quickly here, um, you can see that, um, that we it's tied to the strategic plan. And then what we did was we went on the next page. This is the checkoff sheet. So we took all the information for the next several pages and you can just continue to scroll through. Thank you. Um, universal supports for our students, diagnostic assessments, whether they be academic or well-being. And then we put out a survey to parents or to families and asked for their opinions and which of these goals is most important, which one of these will support your students' well-being the most. Um, where Can you go back up just for a second, Tracy? Right um, to the first, first page with graphs, right there. And all of our students in K through 12 are represented. So I was really excited that families from K through 12 filled out our survey we had about 496 families that filled it out which was about 670 students so about a quarter 25 percent we will be sending out another survey because we want to ask people we we had a couple questions on our dungeness virtual school and we are going to be adding a k through two component so i've been working with um vince on that and we're um and the um, elementary schools because we need to come up with a k through two component because there are people that really want their students in an online program. So we are working on that currently. So go ahead, Tracy. And we asked several questions and then you can see the, um, you, know, you can see the percentages and then continuing down. Um, what do you think will be um, most important to your student during, um, and there are just some more questions. What's the best way to collaborate with you for your student's success? How can we best reach out to you? And then some strategic supports for our students. Um, and continuing on to page seven. And over to page eight, one of the components that we needed to put in there on page eight was our equity analysis tool, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And this is our plan, do, check, and act, and then reflect. So this is what we plan on doing. And we have, um, we will be working starting with the board in June and then all of the administrators in August at our administrative institute of starting to work on our equity plan and the things that we'll, we will be doing so that um, we will have a plan over the next three to five years on how we are going to roll this out. This is not one and done. This is slow go to go fast. And so we want to take the time and be thoughtful and make sure the work we're doing is the right work. And so we're um, going to be contracting with Dr. Tammy Campbell, who is the current sitting superintendent in Federal Way. And she has been working on this equity work with her district for the last six years. And so she is now going to leave the superintendency and go out and consult on this work. And so I happened to catch her at a time where she had a day or two free. And so I'm, re I'm really excited she's going to come and work with us. And so we'll start that work in, um, in June with the board. So continuing on down, Tracy. And then just um, now uh, we had Sonia. Of course, we could not live without Sonia in this plan. So Sonia and Megan sat down and went through all the mitigations and all the procedures and all the regulations we have, have to have for opening up five days a week next year with our students. And yes, right now, even though the CDC has said masks are optional, they are not optional in schools. That has not changed. We will all be in masks unless they tell us differently. But so we're planning on masks. They, um, but you never know. We, you know, we have 
three months before school will start again. A lot can change in three months. And physical distancing, um, they're saying that our, our littles, K-5 students, will have to be three feet apart, and our middle and high school don't have to be three feet apart, but our choir still has to be nine feet apart. So um, all of that is built into the plan, but we also have contingency plans in case some of those things, um, some of those mitigations go away or they tighten up or whatever they whatever happens over the summer. And then just continuing on uh, how we will clean our buildings and our um, making sure that our, our desks are clean and our students' hands are clean. And um, we also have to figure out lunches because all of our students don't fit in the lunchroom three feet apart um, or six feet apart, excuse me. So, you know, that's going to, that's kind of another trick. But um, anyway, um, again, th this plan includes um, if we have to, uh, if we do have a COVID-19 case and what that involves and quarantining and all of that. So there's there's a lot to the uh, mitigation um, and there's a lot to the plan. And the like I said, the state gave us a checkoff sheet and we have we have created this. I will say Megan and the group that has worked on this have done a phenomenal job. This is not this is not a one person show. I will tell you this is a huge team effort. So thank you to the team. So I will take questions if anybody has any, but we are posting this and we are asking the board next Monday on May 24th, there will be a one item right now. We think there'll be a one item agenda and this for the approval because it has to be in on um, June 1st. And so if you go to our website, it will say the fall back to school plan and you can click it on and you will see the entire plan that uh, Tracy just had up. So, Brian, I see, or excuse me, uh, Director Koo, I see you have a question. <laughs> you can call me Brian. I'm not offended <laughs> by that at all. <laughs> Sorry. I've been, yeah. I've been called worse. <laughs> uh, first of all, as a marketer, um, what a quality doc that you all put together. So whomever was the uh, artistic brilliance behind that, it, it was just noticeable. So uh, cheers to that. And Jane, I've got to apologize. Uh, I did not call you today <laughs> to run this by you ahead of time so it does not come with any teeth or agenda uh just a falling down on my part is who you mentioned obviously we have three months and things will change and i've shared before my thoughts on moving towards mass optional as as that uh may happen um who i mean the board ultimately has the pin on that uh well i, I take that back you the ceo has the pin on that but who above, if they were to loosen the restrictions, if that was deemed best, would be the next step? Is that the county health officer? Yes. Yeah, so actually, okay. um, Dr. Berry is the one that dictates really what happens at the schools. And so we go by her guidance and I go to a, a biweekly meeting with her. And Sonia also goes to on the opposite week to a nurse's meeting with her. So she meets with the superintendents every other Tuesday and she meets with the nurses on the opposite weeks, I believe, because we don't end up in the same week. And so she's ultimately the one that makes um, the decision on masking and how far apart we can be. Because when the CDC said, oh, or I'm sorry, when Governor Inslee came out and said, OK, starting tomorrow, you can go three feet apart. Well, that was she came on. We had a meeting with her the next day and she came on and she said, I'm just curious what you're thinking. And so we all told her that if we were going to do this, it wasn't going to be till fall because we just couldn't pull it off that quickly. I mean, you just can't pivot a school on a dime. So she said, I'm really glad because I was going to recommend you didn't do it. And so we do follow her guidance. And um, so she's she's really the one that um, makes those makes those decisions. And, and then the superintendents in the region also we, we also usually follow what she says so that we're all doing the same thing. Perfect. And thank you for doing that. And uh, just a shout out to everyone on that second sheet uh, that worked on this. Obviously, parents, uh, we're all talking about this, what the fall's going to look like. So um, it, it, I know it's falling on deaf ears, perhaps, but this is very valuable work. And uh, this insight is really appreciated. So I look forward to approving it when appropriate and, and uh, moving forward. Well, thank you. Like I said, it was a huge team effort and kudos to Megan. She is the she is the creative genius behind this. I give her ideas and then she comes up with something like 50 times better. So there you go. Director Stoffer. Yes, thank you. Uh, 
really appreciate the work you guys last March um, handed uh, an item that uh, trying to build the airplane in flight. And uh, there has been an, an extremely amount of work um, pat over the summer from uh, staff that was working through the summer um, to the point we're at now. And I think uh, this is an excellent project and uh, demonstrates the transparency out to not only our our parents, families, but to the community. And then working together as a community between all those entities. And um, we have to look at this regional too, because what we do here is gonna could affect either side of our our neighbors here. Okay. So yeah, just tremendous uh, appreciation. And then I'd, I'd like to ask our uh, chair for a five minute break after this before we continue. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Any comments there, Dr. Prime? Nope, I'm all done, but thank you. Oh, I see Director Jeffries has a question. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask about the overused and dreaded word pivot. Is there a pivot clause somewhere in this plan? Because <laughs> um, it's sure hard to predict what, what's going to what's going to come down the road, either um, well, the pivot plan, let's put it that way. Pivot, well, pivot calls. There are contingency plans, but they are not in this plan because this is what goes to the state. So we have them on the back burner. And if things change and we have to move in a different direction, we will reconvene and um, get that ready to go. Director Pickens. Hi, thank you, um, and I appreciate this um, this this presentation. Tracy, Tracy, would you be able to bring up the back to school plan one more time? I'm I just on page four. I wanted to take a take a look at something on there. Are you able to bring that up? This is one thing that I um, that really certainly I know on the ground that this is something that's um, that's always happening. But I was very mindful of as is. The amount of um, diagnostic assessments listed there, because this came up several times as we were talking about whether or not there should be a a waiver or not for for smarter balanced and and I know that's four of those listed on there for for assessments are for smarter balanced, but really the question I know one of the hurdles we're going to have to um, go through is actually going through that smarter balance assessment twice ne during the next school year, and it really does take a toll on the schools, but. To, I remember one of the big questions when we were talking about waiving that is, but wait a minute, how will we assess our kids? And I just wanted to point out that, of course, we're always assessing our kids. I mean, you could; those are just diagnostic assessments there, but and not to mention some of the assessments that happen after courses and after content areas. And um, just it was, I'm, I'm glad that this was really brought out because um, I, I want the the broader public to know that of of course we're assessing our kids. We can't our, our our fabulous teachers wouldn't wouldn't be able to do their job without knowing where their students are at. So um, I appreciated that being uh, being detailed out. So thank you very much. Thank you. No, and and, and I just like a uh, quick last add there. You know, and, and as far as like the director Jeffries talking about the pivot question, you know, we're at my work with employment security department and work source, you know, we're kind of in the same situation where we had a targeted kind of opening date. And then, and some of these new factors have uh, put some, some potential changes into that, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's working off of that. Uh, what's, what's the new input from the governor's office down to local office and, and uh, you know we have a great plan ahead of us right here. We have to focus on that plan as it is, uh, and that's exactly how we are operating from from our our work standpoint. And then uh, and then we, as <laughs> Director Jeffries put put it, pivot or adjust or or whatever um, as things kind of change. Uh, you know, this is this has been a, a non norm for well over a year now. So, uh, but you know. Thanks again to all the team and everybody for all the work that's been done. Um, and uh, I think to Director um, uh, Stoffer's uh, 
point there because we do have a little bit of work left to, to go. Uh, if we could maybe take a uh, five minute max um, break and then we'll move on to uh, uh, Darlene for our uh, finance report.
we doing on time, Tracy? I don't see the clock up there. It just went off. Oh, okay. All right. Hopefully everybody's back. Uh, and uh, with that, let's turn it over to Darlene. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. So I'm going to go over our fund balance report to start off for uh, budget status reports. And um, the fund balance report reports on all five funds and um, the revenues and expenditures and, and where we where we are with our ending fund balance as of April 30th, 2021. So the reports are for April. So um, our beginning fund balance, um, our revenues that we have uh, year to date in the general fund are 27,141,957. And um, that's about 65, almost 66% of our budgeted revenues that we were projecting. And our expenditures are at 27,321,493. And that's about 94% of our uh, projected expenditures for the school year. So right now you can see um, we've had a few more expenditures than revenues year to date of 195,299. And our ending fund balance right now is 3,284,998. And um, that is really uh, due to our local levy collection for our um, EP&O, um, our day-to-day -day operations, and our our community. Um, they stay right on, right on, and and um, deliver every time. So they are paying their taxes, and um, as a result, we are we are staying. You know. Where we need to be with our budget. Capital projects, um, it's it's still the same, 620,895.87. And um, just a note on that, that um, we will be using that uh, money to go forward with our roofing project at Gray Wolf Elementary. So those funds will be used in the 2021 school year. And we will be doing a budget extension for capital projects. And you'll see that resolution at the second board meeting in June. Um, so we'll get all of that project started and um, get everything all set to, to be able to fund that this school year. Debt service fund is, is just sitting there um, until, until we start um, moving forward with um, bonds at some point. So it's just, actually accumulating a little bit of interest and a tiny little bit. Oh, let me see here. Maybe a tiny bit of, of levy, but I don't think so at this point. Um, ASB. Um, ASB is um, staying just about level. Um, it's got a few more expenditures than revenues, of course. Um, revenues are at 8.39% and, and expenditures are at 17.29% for the school year. So um, we can't wait for that to get back into full swing. And I know the students are um, agreeing with that. Transportation vehicle fund, those funds are um, just uh, collecting a little bit of interest and a little bit of um, levy money that just trickles in um, every once in a while and so it's just sitting there uh, for when we need to purchase buses or if we have some um, major repair that would need to happen on a, on a school bus. Does anybody have any questions just on that um, overview of the five funds? Okay, let's move on to um, the general fund expense summary. Okay, so that one is that one is a really detailed um, spreadsheet, and it just goes through all of the expenditure expenditure portion of what I just went over for the general fund, and it just breaks it down by every category of spending that we would 
um, be using right now. So as you scroll down through, you can kind of um, compare April of 2020, which is in the blue column, um, to what we are spending this year as of April 2021. And then um, the encumbrances are go with that column with the April 2021. Um, column so you can see encumbrances are things that we've already um, spoken for purchases that are coming but also um, salaries and benefits in all those areas so we're all paid out of possibly a, a, a different bucket of money um, and so that's what those would be for the remainder of the year um, and then you can kind of see whether we've stayed in budget or we've gone over budget um, just compared to the balance and the percentage Okay. Yeah, and then at the bottom you you can see that the 27,321,493 matches up with the with the um, spreadsheet that we just looked at for expenditures. And then 94.06%. Okay. Um, how about we go to the other general fund summary by object spreadsheet? Mm-hmm. And this one is just a little bit um, broader view of the expenditures that we've had, and it's so then you can you can see what we have spent year to date on salaries for certificate staff, classified staff, um, our benefits for both together, both certificate for everyone together, and then um, supplies and materials, purchase services, which is contractual services. Um, if we've had to have someone come and repair something, um, it would be for um, whatever time they put in for their invoice, th those kinds of thing, things, travel, and then capital outlay. And um, you can see year to date, we're at that 27,321,493. So that's just a, just a more general view of the the spreadsheet before that you just looked at. All right, and then um, the last uh, spreadsheet is the general fund activity um, spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet really is what you're used to seeing on the budget status report that you used to get. And it looks exactly like that. I take all of the numbers from the budget status report and put it um, into a spreadsheet. And um, this is a, a much better view than the budget status report that comes out of the Skyward system. So. Um, you can you can see uh, you can compare year to date 1920 with year to date 2021 and uh, see where we are as far as our um, revenues and our um, expenditures. And you can see up under uh, local taxes that we're at 91.95% of what we had budgeted. And um, that budget under local taxes comes right off of, we know how many um, dollars worth of local levies we went out for and when they should come in, whether it's spring or fall. And um, we're, we're pretty much right on, right on task with that. And then also, I wanted to also point out under federal general purpose, the $104,029.23. Um, that is a question that you guys have been asking about, and that is federal forest revenue, and that's the first revenue that we've gotten for the year, and it's um, mm, it's it's close to what we got last year. Uh, might be up a little bit. I, I forgot to write that number down, but I know it was it's somewhere in that neighborhood. So um, there's our our next federal forest. Um, revenue allotment. Of course, we only budgeted 10,000 because you you can't you um, just can't ever depend on whether you will receive it or not. And then let's see here. So then you can you can see our ending fund balance. Um, it all they all tie together. You can. It's just a different way of looking at all of the numbers so that you can see um, really where. Everything is sitting. Um, let's see here. Uh, as far as enrollment, um, I know that Tracy is working on uh, that big spreadsheet that we normally get to see, but it's been extremely busy. So I'll just give you just a verbal of what I know um, that Tracy gave me. So April headcount was 2,440, and May headcount is 2,445. So the headcount's five um, more. 
And April FTE was 2,404 and May is 2,409. So up five FTE also. So this is um, great. You know, we're just hopefully this will continue and our enrollment will continue to climb. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, there's a hand. There's a hand. Trader Jeffries. Yeah, maybe I missed it in the conversation, but um, it might be more complicated this year. But what percentage is our reserve fund? Um, emergency um, fund. Let's see here. I think that we have it at. Let me look really quick because I normally have that written down for you and I don't right now. Let's see. I'll tell you really quick. So we have. Um, I think it's at 4.6% right now. OK, thank you. Well, let me ask you, like the the Federal Reserve, the Federal Forest Fund we got, we budgeted 10,000 and we got 100,000. Does that I know there's always good use for that money, but it is uh, you got to be real careful with it. Is that the kind of money we might put in the reserve fund as opposed to uh, spending it? Um, not necessarily the federal the federal forest dollars. Um, we have the ability to use those dollars the way that we choose to use them at, at, at the school district level. Um, we're not mandated to use them in a, a specific way. So they could go into that minimum fund balance. They could be used for um, just staying in our, our fund balance that we use for everyday, you know, salaries, benefits, supplies and materials. Um, it just, however we decide to use them, we are able to do that. And we okay. only budget $10,000 because um, there's the possibility that, you know, if I budgeted $100,000 for federal forest dollars and then we got $5,000, that um, is a big hit to our budget of revenues. And we don't know if we're going to get them every year. But I agree. It's a good, not a good idea to spend it on recurring costs because we don't know yeah. if we're going to get it next year. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Somebody else has their hand up, but I can't tell who it is. I think it's me. Oh, um, I your pickings. Hello. Um, I had a question on the um, the general fund activity page. Um, and I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. And this relates to the, uh, the, the, the line second from the bottom, the beginning fund balance as of 9-1-2020. And mm -hmm. I was just trying to find out so the difference between the one that's listed under the annual budget of the one that's 2.2 .2 million versus the one that's 3.4 million, almost 3.5 million. I, I'm assuming that that's how we, the one on the furthest to the right is what we actually started the year, but I'm just trying to find, can, can you explain those two numbers for me? And maybe I'm just missing it. Okay, does uh, Tracy have the right spreadsheet up that you're looking at? Yes, she does. Okay, so, and we're looking at the budget line. Yeah, right? I'm looking at um, on the so the second line from the bottom, the beginning fund balance oh, okay. is as of 9 1 2020. And there's the yeah. two figures there, the 2.2 yep. .2 million and the 3.4, 3.4 million. OK, so um, don't look over this way from the beginning fund balance and go to the right. Look down the column. So the annual budget of 2021 the annual budget, everything that goes down the column is what you're seeing. So when we when we did our budget, we anticipated um, all these numbers. So, okay. yeah, and so okay. the beginning from balance, you know, when we did that was this number. Um, okay. Now over here, the year to date actuals is where we are as of April. Okay. Um, so we'll see where we end up at the at the end of August compared to that that column. Yeah. So look down the columns, not across. Okay. 
And yeah. if I look at the year to date actuals, um, if I if I'm looking at total expenditures, so if I'm looking at that 27 mm -hmm. million number. Yep. And then I and then obviously that's just where we are at this point in the year in April, correct? So correct. There's, there's additional encumbrances that we know for sure we're going to have to pay. And that's that. And that's yeah. that 11.6 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. and well, the additional encumbrances that we know that we'll have between now and August 31st come out of that 2.4 million that's sitting over there in the balance over over to the right. Um, that's what's left of what we budgeted um, of the $41 million that we haven't either spent or encumbered. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. So so there's 2.4 million and that that would account for anything that's not encumbered that might come up between now and august is that yes. right yes yes okay. great yeah. thank you very much you're welcome all right that's that's it, it for me like, looks like that's it yeah. yeah thank you thank you darlene and and you're thanks welcome. for all these uh kind of you know new uh spreadsheets they're you know clean and very helpful and appreciate all the work you're welcome. All right. Back to you, Superintendent Prime. Yes, and I won't be more than about two minutes. Um, I've already talked about a lot of these things, but today we have um, three new employees in the district office. Um, we have Jennifer Cox, who is our new Maria Rorgan's position, which is the district assessment and systems information manager. She started today, and so she's working in the same office as Renee, which has um, been really fun, I think, for Renee to have somebody in the office. And then we have our um, two new technology support technicians who are both, I want you to know, uh, Squim High School graduates, and they have come back to work for us. Spencer Cheesnall, I think is how you pronounce his last name, and Travis Manley. So if you know either one of them, congratulate them. They both started uh, within the last couple of weeks. Spencer's been working on a temporary basis with us, but he was hired full time. And so he started on May 3rd, and I believe Travis um, started on May 7th. So it's really fun to have them in the office and all the tech is now in the district office in where the business office used to be and the business office is where the tech office used to be. So it's really um, been a nice transition for both. And so by all means, stop by and um, visit. Then as several of us attended the Kids at Hope training from more, May 4th through the 8th, um, and that would have been seven of us. So Victoria, Darlene, Candace from, and Mark from the middle school, Christy from the high school, soon to be from Haller, um, Shelly from LSS, and myself. And so it was um, about 32 hours virtually. Um, it, was, um, a, it, was, it was a very good conference, but it was all done virtually. So... Um, anyway, I think everything else I shared with you that I have met with Dr. Campbell a couple of times and starting the equity work and you've seen our back to school plan and the continuous school improvement plans. And so, you know, the work, the, the good work that we do is continuing. So that's my report for tonight. Thank you. There's, there's that mute button. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, next up we have a uh, discussion on the project management selection, and we had a presentation today there, so I know we're going to have a meeting on this later. This so, any, uh, Director Koo? Yeah, thank you. And I guess my main question was, um, we're not expected to make a decision tonight. So is this just a prelude to that uh, subsequent discussion? Yeah, and just any discussion um, on on that. Uh, we're that uh, June seventh. Is that correct, Dr. Prime? Yes, um, June seventh. And so, um, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I guess just any thoughts or questions, and we, you know, we probably could have more discussion on on at that point. Uh, but just had something here in case there was any thoughts or uh, um, stuff before we uh, go to a selection on the seventh. Okay, 
Um, I'll just share some initial thoughts. I uh, note that we're in overtime, so I'll try and be brief. Uh, one, sorry to suck up all the air in the room earlier during the workshop, but I appreciated the uh, presentations by folks. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a challenge uh, for the newcomer because we've had such a favorable experience with veneer. Um, and like I said, um, the, the praise that was lavished on them was um, what I recall from the previous project and uh, just my interactions via the superintendent with uh, their work. So they do a great job. I think the other firm um, is a lot of components are really attractive there. Um, I'd like to, you know, look further into the work that they're doing, but I'll just be candid. Uh, native owned firm is is pretty attractive in terms of uh, wanting to give a fair shake at. So it won't be an easy decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Veneer certainly has the advantage because of their solid work that they've done with us before, uh, which we talked about at the beginning of this relationship. Uh, but uh, I think staff's done a great job uh, bringing forward uh, some high quality candidates and looking forward to hearing more about uh, staff recommendations uh, since they were in the trenches uh, with Veneer in particular and uh, any concerns they may have on their mind. All right. Thank, thank you, uh, Director Director Koo. Uh, uh, Director Stoffer, you're up next. Yes, thank you. Um, the one question I asked during was, uh, could we uh, have a site visit? Because um, I know we're visiting a site that Van Air is working on, and then we have that experience with with them. And so, just seeing uh, firsthand um, from both parties. And right now, for me, it's uh, um, I could flip a coin and go with either or. I liked uh, the presentations and the focus from both both sides are are both presentations so thank you and thank you for the staff for bringing those two forward all right thanks uh director jeffries yeah i think the staff did a great job of bringing us two great candidates and like uh, director stopper said you know i'm not sure we could go wrong with either one so it's going to be a a tough decision. Uh, one is uh, Native American owned, the other one is um, minority female owned. So it's, you know, from that point of view, they're both have their um, advantages. Um, don't really have much to add except uh, just a quandary of how we are going to decide, um, you know, January or <laughs> January. June 7th, we come together to decide between then and now, uh, how do we decide? Are we gonna have any discussions or do we just show up and give our preferences and vote on uh, June 7th? How do we decide? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I think at some point, you know, really it's gonna be up to someone to you know, uh, at that day, make a motion on uh, a selection, and then, you know, we can go into further discussion on that. Because, because right now you could make a motion, and I would probably vote for it, no matter who was uh, nominated or who was, the motion was in favor of. So that's um, that's of a concern of mine to try to ferret out exactly, you know, how we make that decision. Yeah, and I think a good point uh, point to that too. Uh, before I turn it over to Director Pickens, is um, you know just given some time. Uh, you know, we had a short presentation from all of them, uh, a long meeting that we're you know in right now. Afterwards, uh, gives us a couple of weeks to kind of on our own sit back and contemplate some of the things. I know myself, I'm not a big note taker, but I took some pros and con notes and uh, mostly points that I'll be more prepared to, you know, maybe think about as I look at them and share on uh, on the 7th uh, once we get to that point. But, uh, you know, I think that's where, that's basically kind of the the, the concept and where we're at with that. Uh, Eric. Yeah, I really just echo what's what's already been said. I don't know which direction I would really go. I was impressed by both presentations. Um, yeah, I'm just really wondering how I can 
kind of gain a little bit more information to uh, to know more. And I wanted to pose this this question, and, and I don't know if Dr. Prine can weigh in on it, but is there a, and I know usually a, a firm or a company will give us give us their own testimonials, if you will, but is there is there something that we do that we will reach out to um, previous districts to do what would be the equivalent of a of a reference check type of thing where on our own we just seek out just um, from, you know, whether or not uh, it, and if we could get that information as a board to help help guide our decision making. Is that something that's possible at all, Dr. Prime? Yes, it is possible. And um, just the other thing, I will let you know that I there is a um, site visit to the new Port Angeles Fine Arts Center um, scheduled for Wednesday, and the board has been invited to that. And, and Vanier was the construction management. So I reached out to Wenaha and asked them if they had a site close that we could also go visit. And they're um, seeking permission for us to go on one of their sites because it um, it is owned by the Jamestown tribe. So. We're, that would also be uh, another way to weigh your options, but we definitely will be checking um, with other school districts on on their work. And we did that prior. I did that with a couple of people I knew prior to all of the companies um, coming on board. And so anyway, yes, but we will definitely do that and we'll send you a um, we'll send you our critique <laughs> of both companies. And I hope that maybe. Um, if you can go to one site visit, you could go to both of them and just give yourself an equal opportunity there. So great. Yeah, that'd be very helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And and uh, um, just a reminder on that uh, visit to the Port Angeles site. If uh, you haven't been able to connect with Tracy and let her know you're going, uh, please make sure you do that um, beforehand. Uh, OK. Anything else before we move on? All right, next up we have our WIAA Annual Delegating Authority. All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, Director Stauffer? Yes, uh, motion to approve. Thank you. Yep, so basically this is our um, annually we uh, uh, sign a uh, authorization to, uh, you know, be part of WIA and follow uh, WIA. And uh, thank yous for that uh, motion, uh, Director Stauffer. Do we have a second on this? Yeah, I'll sec Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll second that, Director Pickens. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, just been long day getting late. Who's controlling what? I guess I'm in charge. Uh, <laughs> uh, Director <laughs> Jeffries. Yeah, is there a way we can word that motion to be more specific um, other than we approve them? Um, in our minutes, we probably should have a specific um, statement of what exactly that motion is. The, the motion that's on the floor is uh, they move to approve. Yeah, I think we're, we're all we're just like with any, we're approving the document. We're approving the document at hand. Okay, does that need to be more accurately reflected in the minutes? I mean, I think it's, I, I mean, I think it's fine as it is. It's similar to, uh, you know, move to approve the consent agenda, which is filled with, you know, several different items. We're approving that as it's written. All right. Uh, uh, just, just bringing up, uh, I guess, a parliamentary point that yep. moving to approve the consent agenda is more specific than I move to approve. That's all I'm. Asking. Gotcha. 
I see your I see your point. So your point being, um, move to approve the uh, WIAA um, annual authority. Looks like Tracy has her hand up. She yeah, might be the Tracy. expert. <laughs> Tracy. That is 100% how the minutes reflect. Motion to approve the WIA Washington Inner Staff Association Agreement annually. It, it doesn't just say motion to approve. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Director Koo. Tracy covered the uh, technical oh. details, um, yeah. but I, I just also wanted to say thank you for your good work in this role and um, just continuing to advance it uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, over the years, so appreciate that. All right. OK, well, thanks. So we have a motion to approve the annual uh, delegating authority to WIAA. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Next up, we have our calendar amendment. I'll move to approve as presented. Second. All right, so we have a motion to approve our calendar amendment for 2021-2022 and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? All right, next up we have our calendar approval for 2022-23 and 23-24. I move we approve the uh, calendar as presented for 2022-23 and for 2023-24. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Larry. We have a second. I'll second that. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Uh, Director uh, Pickens. Yeah, I guess just a, uh, a question. Was there a um, particular reason why we decided to go out through the out, out two two more years on it? In advance. Um, uh, Victoria, are you there? Victoria. There we go. <laughs> I am here. OK. Yes, thank you, President Gibson. Good evening, directors, Dr. Prine. You know, the only reason we are going out two years is it's my understanding that that's that's kind of the process that we use in our calendar development. We try to we try to be out two years in advance. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. A motion carries. Okay, next up we have second readings on several of uh, policies from last month. Uh, being a second reading, we can, if there's any specific ones that anybody wants to call out, we can do that, or we can approve these, the seconds, uh, as a uh, as a whole. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I would move to approve uh, approval of items 11.05 through, standby please, uh, 11.24 as presented. Okay, thank you. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on those? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. And then below that, we have a few uh, first readings. Uh, any uh, questions or thoughts on those? 
this time. Director Stauffer? Um, yes, just as I had said in my board communications, just the uh, opportunity to uh, unpack these, which uh, hadn't been done. So we've been doing our own audit on them and uh, appreciate all that good work. Appreciate uh, Tracy and staff bringing these to us and it, it affords us the opportunity to really look at what's in these and have that discussion and uh, and not just put the check mark that we have the these policies. So uh, good on all of us for doing this. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm scrolling through a couple of things here. Uh, Director Jeffries. Uh, I was just going to ditto what uh, Director Stauffer and um, I, this audit. I guess one of the questions that comes up this audit, uh, we finished this audit in September, and then the question will be, well, what's next? Because I think we could all agree that we don't want to have to have the next school board do a similar audit of all these policies. So we need to um, be on top of our policies so that uh, they are up to date and mm -hmm. they reflect what the board uh, and the uh, community want to see in our schools so that we don't have to go through this uh, rigorous process, which I've enjoyed. And, you know, because I read them all. And, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's, um, the question will come up at the end of September. Now what? Mm. Yeah, good, good question. I think we'll discuss that in, in August, not tonight. <laughs> okay, uh, Director Pickens. Yeah, just a, a question regarding the um, school resource officer policy, uh, mm -hmm. 4311. Um, I'm just, I'm looking at it and it's still, a, I'm not sure if it's quite ready in its current format to be at a first reading because there's still a lot of, um, it still looks like it's more in a template format and there's a lot of information that might still need to be filled in there. Um, is that is that intentional or is there still more to do before it's ready? Wait, wait. Uh, Tracy? That was intentional on my part. We generally leave the markups um, for folks to be able to see at a first reading, and then hopefully it's cleaned up by the second reading if there's just so we are transparent about everything that was in there. Okay. I just, I just wasn't sure if there were, it was talking about modify as accurate for your district is there, if there's going to be a lot of details added within there or um that might oh i see what you're talking about my mistake yes okay i will defer to dr prine on that one and she has her hands up so dr prine i do you yeah. know i i <laughs> yeah so eric it does need a little bit more work you're right so before we bring it for a second reading um we will need to do some modifications to it. Thank you. OK, thanks. And sorry, I, I, I'm just now noticing noticing that tonight. Otherwise, I'd have mentioned that to you so, sooner than yes. now. So no problem. Thank right. you. Thanks. And, um, Director Koo. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, just curious if we found an answer yet to my question about policy 5010. Um, and specifically, it was what components of said policy are legally mandated uh, outside of our control versus what um, may befall the discretion of this board. Bring that to staff. And if we don't know yet, that's fine. I'm just asking. I'm sorry, Brian. Could you ask one more time? Of course, uh, policy uh, 5010 item 11.40 in the workshop, I had uh, just inquired about what components therein were legally mandated um, as in, you know, above our pay grade, if you will, or what may be um, within the purview of the school board. I see. You know what? I need to do a little more research on that and then I will get back to you on that. But I'm guessing because there are legal references that um, they're tied 
to the law. So, but I will check on that and I will get back to you. Great, thank you. And I'll take that bet and also happy to help. So thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Yeah, Mr. Chair, oh, just one more thing. Yeah, I, I just wanted, um, and this I think this speaks more to what Director Jeffries was mentioning, although I'm not sure about kind of where do we go from here. I am wondering, um, now that we, we're we getting towards the, the well, I don't wanna say, but where we're at now towards the tail end of this, um, if there had been any more thought to um, forming an actual, um, policy committee as we move forward, which would be, uh, I, I believe we talked about it before you came on board, Dr. Prine, but about it'd be a member of the board on there as well as other representatives that would sort of go through these prior to submitting to us and just wasn't sure if that was something that was still being considered. Can can I answer that, yes, President Gibson? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So, um, yes. Eric, that is one of the items on our board. Um, when we get together on our board retreat on the 17th or 18th, and we need to talk about those dates. But when we get together for our board retreat, that is one of the items on there for discussion. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, hearing no more than uh, anything for the good of the order. Nice job, sir. A lot of ground covered. Yeah, a lot of ground covered tonight. Appreciate all the presentations uh, from everybody. Uh, okay, we got a couple of hands. Director Jeffers. Yeah, I just wanted maybe you could remind people about the uh, community survey, superintendent survey that's out and encourage everybody or many people as possible to respond to that to, to give us a, a better feeling or a good feeling about what the community is looking for and a new superintendent that will be um that will be searching that we are searching for yep thanks larry i did that in board communication right i know i just thought we might yeah, want to right. we, it yeah we got like three people left tonight <laughs> All right, uh, Director Pickens, your hand still up or you got something else? I am good to go, sir. Thank you for okay. your work tonight. Okay, great. Thanks everyone. Uh, good work tonight. I know it's a late, long one, but we did cover a lot of ground and appreciate it. Thank you all the guests that uh, stuck it out this evening. Uh, and uh, everyone have a um, good rest of your evening. Thank you all. Thanks all. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.